star Michael Wilbon wrote a very interesting piece for The Undefeated about how African Americans don't seem to care too much about analytics. Wilbon said, quote, sports is emotional and analytics represent the absence of emotion, the antithesis. Nobody gets into sports to be dispassionate. And it just seems to me we're the feel it, smell it, touch it people. Don't tell me that there are no black people who are good at math. There are black people who expert at quantitative analysis. I worry that it becomes a way to exclude. Stephen A., what do you make of Wilbon's article? Well, he's absolutely right on point. Uh, I interviewed Michael Wilbon on my Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports radio show yesterday. We talked about this uh, because he knows that it's something that I've been uh, going off about for quite some time. Um, and I'm proud of him for writing about it. Uh, for those who don't know, Mike Wilbon, long before he was a star on PTI, was a star in the print business as an extraordinary columnist for the Washington Post, a pioneer in this business. And anybody in the, in the field of sports journalism, particularly one of African-American descent like myself, we don't just love him, we revere him. He's one of the elite pioneers this business has ever seen as far as the African-American community is concerned. He is special. And he wrote a good column yesterday, a great column yesterday, speaking about something uh, that's a very, very pertinent issue um, in the profession that we're talking about. When you talk about the NBA, Skip, one of the things that I've lamented, and I don't think people have picked up on this, is that people talk about analytics, but they don't realize exactly what it's doing. It's literally ostracizing African-Americans from getting job opportunities. There's no other way to slice that. Mike Wilbon is absolutely right. Whether it's the barbershop, it's the backyard during the barbecue, it's on the basketball court in, in, in Hollis, Queens, or O'Connell Park in Jamaica, or, 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 in, or the south side of Chicago, to Compton, L.A., the list goes on and on. You don't hear brothers talking about analytics. The eye test, knowledge of the game of basketball, dissecting who can do what, etc., all comes into play. We also monitor who has the leadership capabilities. We definitely monitor what's inside your chest, your heart. How competitive are you? How feisty are you? Are you ready to be a rough rider? Or are you going to wilt beneath the pressure and shrink through the vine? What are you going to do? That's how we, as African Americans, talk about the sport. Other folks used to do the same thing. The Larry Birds of the world and others. That's an old school kind of do. It ain't just black folks that's doing that way. It's a lot of old school white guys that do the same thing. But there's a new breed coming along from the MITs of the world and others where they're focused on analytics. Number one, they're trying to create it as if it's something new. Skip Bayless, I was just talking to Jimmy Jackson, former NBA player, working with Fox, now living in L.A. That's my man. We're very tight. I just saw him a few weeks ago at the Final Four in L.A., and he was reminding me about how Pat Riley was doing analytics in the 90s. You understand? This is not new. But what happens is they introduce these analytics, dude, introduce stuff today as if it is so new. And what happens is they convey this information, usually in writing, with numbers, and that is a language the billionaire owners speak. And so when you go to an owner and you're showing him numbers and you're, you, 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 you're quantifying how a player should be drafted, how a player should be picked and, 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 and joined to a roster, how they should be utilized, etc. And more importantly, you're doing it in a cost efficient manner. That's the language that the owners love to hear. So all of a sudden you get that guy and you make him president of basketball operations or a GM, okay? And what you do is if you're that GM, who do you hire? You hire guys who speak that language, who you've ingratiated yourself with and vice versa, who gravitates to you and vice versa, who you hang out with and drink together and talk about all of these things. And it's never us. And then suddenly you're outside looking in and we look at look at the african-american coaches there's been several openings skip since the nba season has ended we've got earl watson who got his interim tag stripped away so he's not a coach we got nate mcmillan that got hired outside of that you don't hear much else we got a guy like mike woodson who won 54 games and took the knicks to the eastern conference semifinals he struggles to get an interview we've got mark jackson who 
had a lot to do with the success of the Golden State Warriors, basically gift wrapping Steve Kerr and those boys, a championship situation. And what happens? He's out. And by the way, nobody was talking about him in terms of jobs. When he just interviewed in Minnesota, that was the first time he got a call since Denver from last year. But this is a man that won 57, 51 games. And you see guys coming out the wazoo from college and in the pros who don't look like, who are not African-American, okay? And they're getting one opportunity after another. Jaeger in Memphis, he's gone a week later. He's got the job in Sacramento. What the hell has he done? When he got the Memphis job, he got it because he advertised, lived off the analytics and beyond, and swore up and down that he was going to do something different than Lionel Hollins. Two weeks into the job, he was doing the exact same thing Lionel Hollins was doing and kept his job for three years. Is gone, and before he has a chance to pass gas, this dude's got another head coaching job. These are the kind of things that are taking place. And if at the rate it's going, don't be surprised if in a league where there are 30 teams and obviously 30 head coaches, if 10% or less of them happen to be black, black coaches, head coaches are becoming an endangered species. They are in a world of trouble. You always use them as assistants, of course, because you can always sit up there and say, well, you just follow instructions and do this and do that. We will lead the way. That's what's going on here, and it's been going on for quite a while now. So I'm proud of Michael Wilbon for writing about it. Allow me to, to amplify your point about Michael Wilbon. I, I was honored to be a part of some of the first live debate on this network back in the early 90s with Michael Wilbon and Mitch Albom. And I, I cherish him as a broadcaster and commentator and a writer. And I was happy to see this piece, and it was beautifully and brilliantly done on an extremely important topic that I am very concerned about, as are you. I hark back to a theme that's come up on this show repeatedly over the last six or seven years. You and I have been involved in this routinely, this kind of debate, in which we have an ex-athlete on who reaches for the trump card of, you don't know because you didn't play. Have we heard that before? You, you yep. played, obviously, at a higher level than I played. You did play some college basketball, got hurt. But, yes. But my point is, obviously, neither one of us played in the NBA. Or we didn't play college football or pro football or baseball at the highest level. So you know what my answer has become to all those ex-jocks who throw that in my face? What is that? That's ironic because half the team builders now in pro sports didn't play above the high school level because they're analytics guys. It's revenge of the nerds out there. It's some of the best architects in sports did not play past high school because this is happening. Now, I, for one, as you know from debating with me on the show, I'm more of an eye test guy. I'm a gut, I'm, I'm a gut feeling guy. Can he play or can he not play? Now, I like to reinforce my gut feeling with a stat or two occasionally, as do you, but I'm not going to hang my hat on what the second and third level numbers tell me about a player. But this is happening all too often in both basketball and baseball and, and now to a certain degree in football. So to your point, I see seven black head coaches left in basketball. What, what's the percentage now, black uh, uh, basketball? Yeah, about 70 plus percent, about 77. 77 yeah. percent, okay. Seven coaches left. I count six who lost their job. And by the way, one of the seven, the addition you pointed out, Nate McMillan, is a non-analytics guy, an old school basketball coach, who got hired by an old school non-analytics white coach and great white player named Larry Bird. So don't, don't underestimate that. That's why Nate was able to get a job, because Larry Bird's not into the numbers. I mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, okay. So now, I, l let's just quickly look at the sport of baseball, which is much stronger, you know, it's much more analytics-driven than even basketball, certainly mm -hmm. than football. We're down to, if, if I'm not missing anybody, 
Dusty Baker and Dave Roberts, the only two yep. black managers. We have zero Latino managers. Yep. Is it because of this, this whole theory, this notion, this, this advancing of the statistics where, where they're well, getting shut out because they don't believe in it? Well, well, Skip, my answer to that question is this. That may very well be it, but what those folks need to understand is that in the eyes of the black community, we view it as far more incendiary. We view it as just another mechanism to I, justify I keeping us out I, I hear and you. away I hear from you. those opportunities. And that's where it resonates profoundly. And if I may say so myself, I love a lot of these players. I think they're great ambassadors. I think they're fantastic role models. But it's times like this where the Jim Browns, the Bill Russells, the Muhammad Ali's, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, to a lesser degree because it came later on, the Isaiah Thomases yeah. of the world and others come into my mind's eye because I'm sitting up here saying, why in the hell am I sitting here talking about this? Why in the hell is Michael Wilbon talking about this before players say something about it? You got a league that's over 70 percent black, and I don't hear one single brother in the league bringing it up. And I got a problem with that. I, I'm, Nobody, Stephen a., and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure they've thought of it yet. I'm not sure this has come occurred on. to anybody. Uh, come on. Listen, the, the listen, reason. You're, you, listen, if you're around the league, you coach, you coaching in the, you, you playing in the league, and you don't notice the numbers dwindling before your very eyes? Come I got on. That. I mean, if we, notice, yeah. if we notice it, how the hell do you not notice it? And you're playing in the league. And again, I'm not one of those. I'm not... I'm not uh, 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 politicking for or, or advocating, rather, for individuals who are unqualified to be hired. We're talking about a fair and equitable process. We're talking about, and I'm not even advocating a Rooney rule per se because I'm not sure that's an effective because you got these owners that will just give you lip service and go through the process just to be going through the process. But I am at the point where I think that Commissioner Adam Silver and the league office, let's, let's face reality, the NBA has done an absolutely marvelous job uh, of addressing the issue of diversity. It has globalized its brand like no other. I know they care about this stuff. I know what Richard Lapchick with the Sports Institute yep. and the marvelous work that he's done. I know how much it's meant to the NBA and former Commissioner David Stern to have him involved. But at the same time, having said all of that, I do believe that while it may not be a quote-unquote state of emergency, the NBA needs to step up and keep its eyes on what is transpiring before our very eyes. Black dudes are being weeded out of potential coaching opportunities, and in their eyes, they believe that folks are hiding behind analytics to justify it. And I don't know if that's factual, but I do know that the transactions that have been taking place do not lie. Dave Yeager, I know he did a good job, 28 different starters, yeah. and, and, but my God, yeah. what the hell have you done I to agree. have a job a week after getting bounced from Memphis? It's almost like Memphis did him a favor by letting him go so he could get the Sacramento job. It's like he's basketball version, Skip, of Chip Kelly. How the hell that happened? What has he done for that to happen? Yeah, I agree. And I think he's sort of a non-analytics guy, by the way. But that, that's all another well, issue. They, but, 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 they, okay. but those other guys are. Well, go ahead. I'm Will sorry. Will you go allow ahead. me to reiter reiterate one strong, powerful point that Michael Wilbon made in his piece? Sure. It's not that black people obviously aren't capable of comprehending statistics and using them, analytics. It's just that you're raised a different way. You're, 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 you're more on emotion. You're on feel. You're more like your you're well, eye test. Like, it, but but it's it's not like if, if I sat you down and I said, let's let's try to comprehend all these, you, you'd pick it up faster than I would. So it's 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 not that you can't. It's that it's not it's not what you do. It's it's but not, not what you that, know. You're absolutely right. But Skip, they actually do use the analytics. They just don't believe. It should be the be-all and end-all. Yeah. Mike Woodson used analytics. Larry Drew used sure. analytics. I Who knows it. if Tyron Lue is using it? But Probably. in the end, in the end, the bottom line is, again, it feels like it's the latest mechanism I agree. Mm -hmm. to ostracize okay. blacks from getting these jobs I agree. in a league that's over 70% okay. black. You know what that the, is a problem. You know what the bottom line fix here is? More black 
executives in the hiring Amen. positions, mm -hmm. the decision-making positions. And, yep. I, and how about a couple of other black owners? That would help. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. Yep. And by the way, Michael Jordan, but his coach is white, Steve Clifford. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Steve Clifford's a damn good coach. Good point. And I just want to remind everybody, if they want to check out this piece, it's on The Undefeated. It's a new ESPN site that just launched last week. Tremendous work there on sports culture and its content, all from an African-American perspective. So check that out, theundefeated.com. Another serious issue to address when we come back here. The NFL tries to limit concussions in the game. One general manager suggests the game might not be made for humans. The coach, Herm Edwards, will join us, and he'll break it down for us. That's next.